Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse. Let's continue. So we ended our conversation with Lane. We'll, we have to get back into hello, it and start again. Well, hmm. hello again. So we can probably just get things done by clicking on this. Did I show you my press cut? Hmm. The sticky one. Maybe you should order a replacement. Some of these do have different responses. So, how are things in the world of art? Hmm. As always, intense, exciting, full of passion. An intoxicating blend, don't you think? That was hmm. clearly Lane's self-image. So, it, it almost it seems like you should, in playing this game, exit out of conversations... And then go back and click on the same thing twice. Because there seems to be a significant number of conversation icons that have a second line of, of speech that you wouldn't normally see in an average standard way of playing in this, uh, a game like this. And since this game is so short... That's that's a big loss. Wow, so you're going to really have to hunt to get all the dialogue that they recorded, which in inherently gets to the point that they wasted their budget and hid half of their, their voice acting and their audio in places the player is unlikely to s hear or see. What do you know about the owner of La Maledic Seal? Kind of like this. That was Henri's business. Picture he back here. The painting and did the deal with the owner. Would anybody else know anything about the owner? Not likely. He kept especially quiet about that one. But he always hmm. kept a manifest for every exhibition. So yeah, like this, this temple back here. We very likely won't ever do anything with it. There's flickering light here. Uh, nice that it's there. People walking in the background. It's kind of surprising that you don't see an occasional person walk in the foreground. That would be the next way to make this feel more lifelike. But the people walking in the background here, uh, in all honesty, just stand out because you don't see people walking around anywhere else in the in any of the other locations we've been to so we need to ask about the manifest i'm writing a follow-up piece on the gallery theft ah so you need an inside view authoritative something like that hmm the police have finished in the gallery we could chat in the office it's much more comfortable more intimate. I might even be able to rustle up a little bottle of champagne. Hmm. Maybe later. I have some things to do first. Maybe next time, then. And then the manifest. You mentioned the manifest. How would one get a look at that? One might start in the office. That's where Henri kept most of his paperwork. About the gallery. Hmm. Of course, my dear. We can go there now, if you would like. So, now we have a good old-fashioned yes-no choice, which is a little late in gameplay to add this. That sounds great. But... We can discuss my ordeal. Feels like a glass of champagne. we're gonna trigger a cutscene. chat with Lane was the last thing I wanted. But it was my best hope, if I wanted to get a look around the office. So, what are we waiting for? I still don't have the key, so I don't think I'm going to get to the manifest. Hmm. Lane is animated way too fat to, to be as... As... After you, my dear. Confident as he seems to be. Hmm. The place was heaving with junk. Finding I... what I wanted wouldn't be easy. 
As Lane sat down, something stuck out from beneath the cushion. It looked like a folder. Whatever it was, the police had missed it. I needed to get it. Come, join me on the couch. I'm ready for you. You will be gentle with me, won't you? Oh, I'm never gentle, Monsieur Lane. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Do call me Hector. Hmm. See, I I get drawing him as fat, but they they've gone too far. Sometimes, when if you can get a glimpse of him sideways, he he looks like he's easily approaching five to six hundred pounds, like horribly, horribly, morbidly obese. Where if where I think he probably would have wanted to just give him a large gut. And make him seem old. Uh, this lady also, by the way, is not the same lady. So we could pull the statue and see what happens. Since we have, as a player, knowledge. And slightly disturbing. Hmm. Let's look at everything. I couldn't search the desk while Lane was there. So is she gonna just hit him? Was covered in mementos. Like, I think I'd she's gonna knock him out. A VW van. With what I earned, hmm. I'd never own one of those. Wow. Was marked with the date of the exhibition. She's must be really, really poor. There was nothing in all this pile of junk that looked anything like a manifest it was a decorative pipe it was a poster for a Stockholm music festival hmm. the headline was a group called the hairy lobsters there was nothing special about the clock let's just look at everything the gallery looked empty hmm I guess it was on this guitar. Trying to squeeze sure. as much content out of this game as possible. So I want to click on anything Not we can click on. I thought George might like that one. Hmm. Come. The bottles were completely empty. A wonderfully painted nude. The signature read Tanya R. Hmm. Lane hadn't noticed the folder. With that amount of padding, who would? The only way to get hold of it was to distract him. And so now we've odd, we're very oddly zoomed in. Very, very different from any of the previous Broken Sword element uh, scenes. And we've got to distract him. And I think she is just going to grab the bottle and uh, punch him eventually here. Eat an apple. So, yeah, they've, they've gone way too fat here. Look how, how s sleek and skinny Nico is in comparison, and she was always drawn as, as skinny and as idealistic, really, uh, pretty as traditionally pretty as you'd want. Uh, so, this is just a stark contrast. So you really don't know who owns this sub? I'm sorry, hmm. my dear, I really don't. Let's just ask all these questions. Show her the press card again. Did I show you my press card? The sticky one. Maybe you should order a replacement. Hmm. Let's ask him about the statue of him. I Henry. see Henri had a statue of himself. Yes. For a man of high aspiration, he had alarmingly low taste. Nevertheless, I shall mm. miss him. We were like family. Yeah. What will happen to this place now? Henri's widow will decide, poor soul. 
She may find it in her heart to keep me around. Oh, I'm sure she will. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd really trust Henry the Henri to to run a gallery. He if you have such bad taste as he seems to have. <laughs> Is there anything you, you just can stock it with bad pain. paintings? It was an absolute treat to come across it. A true undiscovered gem. There is no denying it is a fantastic painting. What can you tell me about the religious significance? Notice her of lips aren't there is a really moving in sync the painting, as too. much as they should be. Central to this must be the pantheon of saints. Hmm. Yeah, zoomed in like this, you can see their lips are going up and down, and they're trying to keep them somewhat synced, but they don't have enough animations here. Hmm. And you know what? Somewhat oddly, this looks less 3D in its animation. Like, they, they did a slightly better job here than in other parts of the game. Oh. Because they're both sitting, I guess you don't have to. You don't have to do as much animation and movement. Nature's bomb in troubled times. It's still way too 3D, though. Right. So we have a glass. And a light in his glass and a folder. So am I just going to drink him under the table? Get him drunk? So. Do I... How many things can I interact with here? Do I just pour it on lane? Hmm. Let's see. We can ask the same questions as again. Let's see. To new friends. To Where did his wine go? It just disappeared and then reappeared. And then she spilled it. Oh, on. but Joe, that is so cold. Oops, silly me. I am so sorry. I'll have to dry this off. Don't you worry, my dear. And we take the folder. In the folder was a list of all the paintings in the exhibition. The Maledictio had to be there. It was. And next to it was the owner's name. Mr. Madovsky. The police had obviously not spotted the folder. I put it back. I had what I needed for my story. Monsieur Lane, hmm. thanks for everything. But I think I hear my editor calling. Ma chérie, no need to leave so soon. It, it's only a little spillage. A little while later. And I found out who claimed to own La Maledexio. Some guy named Madovsky. Sounds Russian, right? Madovsky, my god. Who is he? He's new on the old dark block. Fresh into London from Russia with ambition. Call Art, this is way over your head. I'm gonna put a more experienced crime journalist on the story. I can't afford for you to get hurt. Relax, what? Ronnie, this is my story. Leave it with me. Let's discuss it over lunch tomorrow. Okay. But don't do anything more. See you tomorrow. So once again, she has a, a boss telling her to back off. Ronnie didn't trust me on this story, but I wasn't going to let him give it to someone else. Hmm. I was going to have to move fast. Come in. George! Pleasure. Great to see you. How'd you get out of jail? Hope you don't mind me just dropping in. No, not at all. How are you getting on? Pretty good. I found the gun that was used in the robbery. I'm impressed. Yeah? Well, Nave wasn't. He accused me of trying to plant it, and then of being involved in Henri's death. 
Then he threw me into a cell. He couldn't make a stick, of course, so he had to let me go this morning. But he's convinced... Really, there's a big so jump in the wrong, story? Nail me next time. But, hey, on the bright side, have I got a story for you. A long story later. So we jump the, past the part where he escapes from a cell. Annette, the and then we jump security, lied about the all of the conversation of the part of the game we've already played. Which I don't mind then. Medovsky. That's the same guy who claims to own La Maledictio. What? He owns the painting and Vera's security? He has to be the one behind this whole scam. You're telling me. We have to be sure. So, is what this just an insurance scam? Where he's trying to get his painting back and the money? Uh, I from cannot insurance? sleep on that bed. It is too soft. Josh, this is Senor Marquez. Uh, nice to meet you. Hmm. Hmm. So you are this George, huh? Senor Marquez is staying in the apartment across the hall. Apparently, he's the real owner of La Maledictio. What? I thought you said Madovsky was the owner. Senor Marquez claims the painting was stolen from his family during the Spanish Civil War. Really? Do you have any proof? Senor Marquez, could you show him the photograph? Hmm. The funny thing here is this part, this missing section, uh, is the part that we saw before. So there might be some something about needing to see the whole photo to decode it. Part of the family photograph was missing. The very section that was so clear in Nico's photo. Yeah. That's definitely La Maledizio hanging on the wall. It belonged to my family, so it belongs to me. And then we've got a statue. A pair of statues stood on plinths on the mantelpiece. And then we've got a couple of statues here too. And then they've got a man. Who is this? My father. When they came for us in 38, I fled with my mother, but my father was not so lucky. There's a whole missing section over here. Part of the family photograph was missing. Hmm. The very section that was so clear in Nico's photo. This and this is missing, but it apparently it thinks I'm clicking on this when I'm way over here clicking on this. Interesting. Who's this? My mother. A good woman. A saint. How can we prove this is you as a child? The dates would tie up shells. If the painting really was stolen during the 1930s, then this Madovsky guy has no legitimate claim to it. But how can I be sure that you're the boy in that picture? I can prove it. Look at my father in the photograph. You see the medallion he's wearing? He gave it to me just before he died. This medallion has been in our family for hundreds of years. Ah, so we'll use that at some point. That still really is really, really hard to prove, though, because maybe you just you know, are impersonating the boy. It's definitely the same medallion. A snake eating its own tail. That's also on the painting. It is the Ouroboros. Hmm. The what? The Ouroboros. It is a sign of my people, my family, my faith. The Gnostics. My father was a Gnostic leader. The Maledictio is sacred to the Gnostics. Hence, they both display the Ouroboros. A priest hmm. I met said the painting was the devil's work. A thing of evil. <laughs> He would say that. Do not believe all you hear from the church. Whatever you think, the painting is mine. If Marquez was the true owner of Maledictio, then Madovsky had no legal claim to it. 
might be tough to prove, but if I could, we wouldn't have to pay out on the insurance. So if the that's all he cares to, about, how did Madovsky get it? <laughs> the fascists stole it. It went to Madrid, then Berlin, then after the war to Moscow. After that, it was lost until now. We need to talk to this Madovsky, but how do we find him? Yeah, how do we find him? Well, apparently the game wants me to figure that out. So here's something that should be brought up. I can't exactly tell you when, but I'm pretty sure George has heard of the Ouroboros before. Uh, my guess is somewhere in Broken Sword 2. It was mentioned, it was shown, he should at least recognize it, uh, and that would have been a very helpful thing just to have a call back to previous games. I'm also Nico's trash upset, paper. again I guess, there. not really, I, I'm not really surprised by this, that, but we're, Nico is not, we're not playing as Nico anymore. So her section, again, was very unimportant, very short, and just kind of crammed in there as a token section. Nico had finally upgraded her computer. Hmm. Nico's camera was pretty old. I wished hmm. she could afford a new one. See, they, they still describe her as rather poor. Hmm. Which... In, which then just kind of makes it even weirder. It's like, I think Nico would probably be chomping at the bit to, to marry George just to, to improve her own lot in life. But on top of the fact that I think they actually do like each other or could learn to like each other. That was a pretty good line. All right. So, am I supposed to talk to Nico? Hey, Nico. Yes, Josh. Hmm. I guess I could show her a bunch of things. Let's see. This paperclip is bound to come in useful. I just know it. Well, you've surprised me before, Josh. I'd keep it. Let's just go through all these things and try to get as much gameplay out of this game as possible. Here's the proof that Henri was involved in the robbery. Interesting, but it doesn't help us find the killer. It would be rather interesting if uh, you got a different ending or a better score by handing evidence to Nico so she could eventually write a story about it or hand it over to the police. Hey, Nico. Have I introduced you to Trevor? Oh, get that horrible thing away. Hmm. I'm pretty surprised this cookie is held up so well in my pocket. Got to work on the small talk, Josh. <laughs> what do you think of this, Nico? I don't know. Uh, do you think it might be useful? That's a very default response. What do you think of this, Nico? I don't know. Uh, do you think it might be useful? Exact same default response. Why would anybody want to wear this stuff? Who knows? Just keep it away from me. Yeah. And we can only have so much more before you'd have to start scrolling. What do you think of this, Nico? I think you have an insatiable habit for collecting things, George. We are very far, however, from Broken Sword 1 where he had a grease paint covered nap in our Kleenex the whole game and showed it to everybody. So let's go over what we know about the thief. Hmm. Okay, well, he had a distinctive tattoo on one arm. And his helmet had Waterloo motors across it. Not a lot to go on. You can't look that up on a computer? Like Headhunter's tattoo, Waterloo motors, that should probably find you something. We need to track down Waterloo motors. Have you tried the internet? I've been kind of busy. Hmm. 
Okay, let's have a look. Waterloo Station, Battle of Waterloo, Waterloo Kebabs, Waterloo Sunset. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Waterloo Motors. It's a garage in London. I'll send the number to your phone. The garage in London. That's nice. Because that opens the door that will go to London and have some new areas to, to walk around. Although having more areas in this game isn't going to help much because every area we've been in so far has been incredibly small and had very little to do in it. You said the thief had a tattoo. <laughs> On his arm, it was a skull and crossbones with headhunters written around it. Uh, you gonna respond to that? Um, interesting. It, it broke out of the conversation there. Yes. Hmm. It just ended the conversation. What do we know about this Madovsky character? Ronnie said he was dangerous and very rich. He claims to be the owner of La Maledicio. And so he still to be know the boss anything. of your security who were supposed to protect it. Now that kind of figures. The best way to steal something is to get hired to look after it. But why steal a painting you already own? We need to talk to this guy. Insurance. To do that, we need to find him. You're an insurance investigator. Do you know anything about Villera security? Or let's ask her, I, found I guess. I gun that Henri was shot with at Vera Security. If Madoski owns yeah. Vera Security, it means that he must know the killer. There's but a lot of words that. here to mispronounce to that are easy to mispronounce because of the French pronunciations of so many different things. Why would somebody steal their own painting? For example, the word Insurance pronunciation. Style? But then why kill Henri? I get the impression that Henri was somehow involved. So, Waterloo Motors is a garage in London. Hmm, that's a surprise. Yes, I sent you their phone number. So that's all of that conversation. Let's talk to Marquis. Senor Marquez. Marquez. <laughs> yes, George. I'm not going to keep any of this stuff straight. Tell us about the Gnostics. You mentioned the Gnostics. What can you tell me about them? It is not important. A religious sect, that is all. My family were Gnostic. They were a peaceful, good people. I found this paper clip. It's got to be useful for something. I imagine if you have any paper, you need clipped. He's being very elusive on the Gnostics. Se uh, section. Gnostics, basically to my understanding, determined that God was evil because God created a universe full of evil and pain and suffering or something like that, and therefore they worshipped uh, Lucifer instead because Lucifer brought the knowledge of good and evil, uh, the serpent did, which is not... Te technically in in the Bible the serpent is not Lucifer uh, it's just kind of colloquially believed that they're they're all the same character uh, but so so yeah basically they're kind of Christian devil worshipers even more than what you might think of of modern day devil worshippers, which are still kind of in the same way the B team of Christianity. Because if you're worshipping the devil, that you're also believe, believing in the, the Christian God and all of that, too. You're just choosing to reject the, the main good guy. Hey, Senor Marquez. Meet Trevor. He is a cockroach in a box. He's or, a pet. I'm getting rather attached to him. 
at least that's what I've heard about the Gnostics. I could be wrong. Uh, they were they were a real sect, but they were killed by the Templars or in the Inquisition, one or the other. And so uh, I don't think there's actually any Gnostics that could be traced back to the original Gnostics that still exist. You want a cookie, mm. Senor Marquez? No, it has been in your pocket and is falling to pieces. Hmm. I don't suppose you have any use for a match. Why would I? Don't mind saying this is pretty boring. Alright, so we'll leave these three items to talk to him about for next time. Man, it is really, really hard to stay playing this game. It makes me sleepy. It's dull as all get out. We went another 3%. So last, we went from 13% to 18%, a 5% jump. And now we are up to 21%. Uh, if we do make it to London, we're, we're not making it to two other places, almost certainly. Uh, just because that would be too much travel for what this game wants to be. In fact, this game seems a lot linear and a lot shorter than what playing the original Brooklyn Sword would have been like. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.